Welcome to Ella's Beef Easter's Radio Air Check and Classic TV Channel. Henry has 17 security men around me all the time. Huh. I was in Washington. What kind of a car was it? This was my Lincoln. A Lincoln, right? Yes. Uh, it was uh, one of those executive Lincolns, you know, a stretch job. Right. How much did it cost when it was new? Uh, it was 32000 Right. So you had all of this, how did you feel with all those Secret Service people around you? Uh, very safe, yeah. very, very <laughs> secure, because, uh, well, the media, the, uh, the uh, top dog was a female uh, captain in the Army Air Force. She sat next to me all the time the car moved. Uh, she gave orders to everybody else. She A female her. was the boss. She was the boss, a uh, full yeah. captain. Yeah. Very, very, uh, oh, clever. She knew exactly what we were doing and where we were. And every time we combed our hair, she knew what, what we were doing. And uh, they were equipped, uh, all of us were equipped with uh, two-way radios and the suits and all that baloney. And uh, there was a white Cadillac in front of me. I was in the middle, and then there was the army uh, wagon behind me. So... And my car always contained uh, the captain, another security in front, and three men in back. So it was wall-to-wall -wall security, so I didn't feel bad at all. And uh, I enjoyed the whole thing. I went to all the uh, inauguration balls. Who'd you, who'd you meet? Who, who'd you meet down there? Henry? Well, uh, at mean, the time, I, you know, Mr. Carter. Right. And... Uh, I met the entire uh, King family. Right. I was mainly responsible for them. And uh, uh, some generals, I forgot the names even, yeah. uh, that had to go from here to, you know, uh, to a hotel or whatever. Did you tell Jimmy he talked funny? Did, Jimmy, you talked funny. No, he was very pleasant. Oh, yeah. gee, I mean, uh, I really enjoyed having him in the car, you know. This is the part I like about limousines. They, it's fascinating to meet the backside of people that, you know, the public don't see. I know. It. And uh, I really enjoyed it. And it was, I felt like I was in a movie of Double Rock 7. <laughs> <laughs> Henry, how'd you get to meet Jackie Onassis? I mean, the drive, how'd you drive Jackie Onassis? Uh, Jackie, uh, well, she, uh, we had this library dedication here in Boston, if you remember. And uh, my name was, uh, finally, it was growing. And uh, it's mostly word of mouth that uh, I, I don't even want to advertise in the Yellow Pages, in the Boston Yellow Pages. Why? Uh, it's too much. I can uh, you know, it's too burdensome. And then you get a lot of quacks at call. Oh. You know, at 11, 12 o'clock at night, they want the car. <laughs> and, you know, if I don't know the people or, you know, if they don't sound right, I don't want to go out. You know, can you blame me? No, well, don't you, don't you check things out first? Uh, well... We do, yes. See, now, if uh, somebody calls and they want the car a week from today, I have a chance. But if they want it tonight, you know, I kind of say forget it. Yeah. And uh, so... Uh, Don't you advertise in the in, in the in the, the, the uh, classified? Just in Quincy. Oh. Just uh, uh, my local yokel, so to speak. For the South Shore Limousine Service, right? That's correct, yeah. Right. So, uh... you say no henry leave me alone she says, uh, no she said uh, tomorrow yeah. next time she said, i don't have my makeup right or i don't have my clothes right 
Yeah. Well, Sandy came, and that was the last day I had her to take care of her. So, uh, she, uh, we got to the, uh, on the way over, I asked her again, I said, this is the last day, do you mind? I don't want it. Oh. So, uh, you should have ordered her. You say, listen, I drove you around and I want a picture. Do you understand, Jackie? Well, what happened, uh, when we got to the library, she's sitting very nicely, waiting for me to run around and open the door. I turned around with my phone and snapped it. <laughs> well, she was, uh, you know, as soon as she saw the lens, she did smile very nicely. And uh, when she got out of the car herself, she slammed the door so hard, I oh. thought the car was going to knock over. Oh, but I did get an excellent photo of her. I'll have to send you one if you're interested. Yes, I am, sure. Okay, because it's very attractive. It's come out excellent. I'd like to get an invite to a place over at Martha's Vineyard. Awesome. <laughs> I've been down at the Kennedy's uh, compound with uh, Phyllis Tiller. She was in right yeah. down uh, this, uh, this the, uh, last season. She's a nice person, wasn't she? She is very comical. They're, they're the same on stage as off stage. Right. Very nice. What about Tony Bennett? Is he quiet? Tony is a very unique guy. I've driven him for three years. See, I work for the South Shore Music Circuit. Oh, yes, right. Go ahead. See, right there is my connection with these big people. And uh, Tony, the first uh, year we got to coin it because, you know, we, we, we lived together. I right? babysit him from the Logan Airport through the show the entire week, and then I bring him back at the end of the week. Oh. So we get to know each other very, very well. Right. And uh, the second year I had Tony here in Boston, he got in the back of the limo, and it was uh, close to midnight, and he was very tired. You know, they have a long, hard uh, night duty, so to speak. So right. he put on the TV, and I was uh, quite flabbergasted. The TV in the back of the car? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And uh, they uh, c uh, came a commercial. And uh, he started humming to the commercial, and uh, I looked in the mirror, he was asleep. Huh. But he, he was humming to the commercial and asleep. He's so music-oriented. Yeah, well, listen, why don't you do me a favor, Henry, since we're becoming friends, put on WBZ radio, forget the TV. <laughs> put the TV, put the radio on in the back. Well, there is a radio in the back, too. Oh, all right. I mean, there's a radio, and uh, one car has three bars. Oh, son of a gun. Uh, the one he was in only had two. I mean, uh, you know, a so they, full bar and a regular, you know, the cocktail bar. And they can drink whatever they want, right? Uh, well, I see for the stars, I usually supply something, you know, champagne. Uh, if I know what they like, you know, a certain wine. Henry, that's nice. What about, were you with Tony Orlando when he, when he freaked out? Yes, I was that day. I mean, I was uh, taking care of him that uh, on Friday. Yeah. And I'm sorry to say, you know, he, he got on stage and, uh, you know, he made us all panic because I walked around, you know, uh, the theater quite a bit in the back side. He, he actually uh, freaked out, uh, I don't know if I should say it, from drugs, not from, uh, yeah. I mean, the poor soul, he, he did a lot of drugs. I know. And uh, that's what uh, did it. And, uh, well, we got him in the car, and we were bringing him back to the, uh, the motel where he was staying. And uh, uh, that particular model, uh, I have a four-foot dog that's wide enough for the brides, because uh, I think some of the brides have such big gowns yeah. that when I did, uh, helped design the car, I had the door built in on a four-footer, so that big hoop could get in and out. And uh, uh, he... Uh, he actually I can't think of it. Oh. And uh, it was, uh, you know, now it just seems comical, but uh, he was uh, uh, running down the street. He had these high, beautiful cowboy, white cowboy boots on, you know, for, uh, for stage appearance. Right. And he was uh, clumping down the road, and here's this big uh, gray limo chasing him down the street. Oh. And his wife was, you know, in the car, panicking and uh, screaming, you know, stop him, stop him. Well, we, we finally did. Because when we left uh, the theater, we just had the road manager, his wife, and himself. You know, we didn't want a crowd. What town, what city was that in? Right in Cohasset. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, but uh, 
uh, you know, he was very, very sick. Did, did, was he through with the performance then, at that time? No, he just started. Oh, did he Did he go through with the show? No, he was only on about, uh, I, I was remembering back between five and eight minutes, that's all, into the show. Yeah. See, when he went on, he was uh, uh, high. Oh. So, you know, he just couldn't take it. This is something we shouldn't talk about too much, I don't think. Okay, all right, we get off that. Yeah. What? Well, what about, uh, what about, uh, let me see. Uh, let me see. <laughs> she, she's very, you know... She's still uh, good-looking, right? She's gorgeous. Yeah. I mean, what, I don't know, is she about 63 now? Easy, yeah. But, yeah, yeah. And uh, she looks like she's uh, in her, her beginning of her 30s, for crying out loud. Oh. And another one that surprised me, a uh, front seat driver, was uh, uh, Joan Rivers. Oh, yeah. She climbed over the... Uh, we put her in back with her husband and her daughter took off for the airport going home, you know, going back to Logan at the end of the se uh, re her season here. Right. And uh, she, in a dress, climbed over the, the, the seat. Over the partition? Uh, yes, yeah, to get oh. in front to <laughs> talk to the driver. She says, I don't want to sit back with my family. I know them or I don't know you. <laughs> well, these are, you know, pleasant thoughts to remember of these kind of people. And uh, uh, one of my favorites is uh, Anthony Murray. Yeah. Uh, see, his wife lives in Gloucester. And uh, so that means I had to ride two hours up to Gloucester to pick him up for the show. And uh, he had, in other words, he had a four-hour ride with me in the car every, every evening. Now, how do you charge for that? Uh, the circus pays me for that. What's that? Oh, I see. Uh, uh, you know, when, what? when uh, nine out of ten of the stars, you know, do, do uh, use the limo, the others have buses or their own, you know, Mercedes or Rolls or whatever. What if I wanted to hire you for a day? How much does that cost? Uh, it's twenty-seven fifty an hour. Twenty-seven fifty an hour. Yeah, and I compete with everybody in town. <laughs> I have to, and uh, I say my cars are from twenty-five. I have one that I bought from Columbia Pictures just recently. It's a 27-footer. Uh, it's a beauty. And uh, it, that's the one with the three bars. And the three color. bars? What, what is the, what's the most expensive car you have? This one here. It's oh. 40, 47 grand. Holy mackerel, for 47. Do you drive that one? I'm the only one that's allowed in there. I won't let my drivers. But that's my baby. <laughs> I mean, you know, I just take special people that I know in that car, and if, uh, if I trust them for the, you know, if they sound good on the phone for the wedding, I will, you know, you know, in introduce that car. A lot of times on the phone, I won't even mention that I have that one. Right. Because... Uh, if I call you, that's the car I want. Well, that's the car you'll get if you want it. That's the big... What was that, Lincoln? Yes, they're only... I'm known as the Lincoln man in the area. I started back... I was the Lincoln stretches in 74, and I was one of the first in New England to, you know, the all stretches, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the term, is a custom-made car. Uh, because Lincoln does not make limos. I didn't, that's why I asked you, I never heard of one. No, they don't make them. You have to uh, uh, buy an ordinary Lincoln before it's finished. Uh, they send it to uh, one of these makers. Mine happens to be Andy Horton and, and uh, Mississippi, um, Canada. Out of, up, up of Toronto. Uh -huh. Well, we, listen. We get together. We uh, kind of design what I want. He'll take the uh, ordinary Lincoln from uh, the factory, drive it up there by himself. Uh, Henry, could you, could you hold on? I have a couple of messages I have to get on. Hold on, please. Sure. The greatest fur buys of all time are available to you at the Travelodge 1200 Beacon Street in Brookline, Massachusetts, this Saturday and Sunday.
Drazen Furriers Clearinghouse, top-notch furriers for 75 years, brings you a million and a half dollar fur collection at prices so low, you'll be amazed and delighted. Save 40 to 70 percent below retail and department store prices in fine quality furs in all varieties. New, one-of-a-kind, designer, and pre-owned. A good example. Fabulous natural black glamour coats. Store priced over $7,000. Drazen's price $29.95. And in addition to their marvelous sale, Drazen's wishes to buy or trade all the used furs in the Boston area. Their buyer will be available the entire two days with top cash prices paid on the spot. And public retailers and wholesalers are welcome. So come and buy and sell or trade a fur now. This Saturday, 10 to 9, Sunday, 10 to 6 at the Travelodge, 1200 Beacon Street in Brookline, Massachusetts. Well, let's see, we have one more message here. One of the major attractions of 1982 is the World's Fair to be held in Knoxville, Tennessee this summer. A World's Fair is always an exciting event and it's something that you don't want to miss. Crimson Travel makes it easy for you with its special one-week money-saving charter tours. You can enjoy this fabulous event without the hassle of trying to find scarce hotel rooms or transportation. You also have the opportunity to see America's heartland, beautiful Tennessee, and the Smoky Mountains. Crimson Travel's fantastic tour includes round-trip jets, seven nights hotel, sightseeing in Knoxville, Chattanooga, and Nashville, the home of country and western music. Of course, admission to the World's Fair is included, and uh, you'll also visit both Opryland and the world-famous Grand Ole Opry. And there'll be uh, headliner entertainment, music, showcase pavilions, rides, Nightly fireworks, spectaculars, loads of, uh, of color and excitement throughout the day. It's all yours for only $569 per person double occupancy, plus $59 tax and service. For a free brochure, call Crimson Travel at 868-2600. Call now. Operators are standing by. That's 868-2600, 868-2600. Henry, yes. will you stand by for a few minutes? We'll, we'll talk another 10 minutes after the news, okay? Okay. Thank you. Right on. Barbara Howard standing by right here on... WBZ Boston, the spirit of New England, Group W Westinghouse Broadcasting. It's 1 o'clock. And it's 27 degrees in Boston. The BZ forecast is calling for quite a bit of cloudiness overnight. Some light snow due in on Friday. I'm Barbara Howard with the 1 o'clock WBZ News. 24 prisoners are housed tonight in the Middlesex County Jail, a facility without a sprinkler system. That has raised the ire of Cambridge City Manager Robert Healy, who has petitioned the court to have those prisoners removed. Those unfortunate circumstances, of course, being fires, according to Healy. That's what he's worried about. But Middlesex County Sheriff Ed Henenbury says that he intends to keep the prisoners at the facility unless the courts order them removed. He says that there was little choice but to transfer them out of overcrowded state facilities when they were sent to the Middlesex jail on Wednesday night. Radical bank robber Susan Sachs, serving time at MCI Framingham for her part in a bank robbery in which a Boston police officer was killed, is in more hot water. She and four other inmates are being charged with alleged income tax violations. They're accused of not paying state taxes on income from a prisoner-run computer business a business that was put out of business in a crackdown last month. Walpole State Prison remains locked down. Prison spokesman Joe Landolfi explains that an investigation stemming from last week's seizure of a cache of weapons is underway. Lockdown was initiated as a precautionary measure and to enable Walpole officials to continue with their investigation into the disturbance that was planned last week at MCI Walpole. The lockdown will be lifted, says Landolfi, as soon as the prisoners involved in the alleged scheme are isolated. Federal funds have come through for the fire-devastated cities of Lynn and Holyoke. Lynn received $200,000 to help rebuild what was lost in November's multi-million dollar fire, and Holyoke got $100,000 to cope with the loss sustained after a series of mysterious fires. The Washington Post is reporting that the White House is considering allowing military advisors in El Salvador to carry M16 rifles into the field. Some advisors were reprimanded last week after a film crew caught them carrying the weapons. One was ordered to leave the country. The pilot of the Japan Airlines jet that went down in Tokyo Harbor last week is to be charged with involuntary manslaughter. There is evidence that the pilot shoved the controls down, causing the plane to crash, killing 24 passengers. The pilot had a record of psychological problems. 
Time now for a Group W financial report. Here's Jerry Rosen. Many people worry about the safety of money market funds since they are not federally insured as are bank accounts. While most of the funds could not pay all their obligations if everyone demanded their money at once, the vast majority could become liquid in a very short time. That's because most of their portfolios are in very short-term obligations, often 30 to 60 days. So if you are worried about the liquidity of a money market fund, look in your newspaper and find out its average maturity. The shorter the maturity, of course, the more quickly it will be able to meet its obligations. There is, however, a negative in shorter maturities. If interest rates decline, the yield on a fund with a shorter maturity will go down faster than those with longer-term portfolios. This is Jerry Rosen, Group W, Personal Finance Correspondent. Busy news time is 104, temperature 27 degrees. Here's another moment of thought from Charles F. Scott, director of J.S. Waterman & Sons Funeral Home. Up until several years ago, making pre-arrangements, arranging your own funeral service before death, was thought of as rather strange, and uh, not very many people would come in and want to discuss it with the funeral director. The trend in the past five years or so has increased tremendously. We began to get some people coming in and very timidly asking whether in fact they could do this. And we, of course, uh, funeral directors who really do live to serve whatever the circumstances, uh, have agreed and have made pre-arrangements through these years. What people should do is to investigate the practitioners of funeral service, the funeral director, and they should sit down and discuss what they would like done when they pass away. For information on pre-arrangement, contact J.S. Waterman in your community, Kenmore Square, Boston, in Wellesley, and in Cochituate Village, Wayland. In sports, in the NBA, Indiana beat San Diego 119 to 114, and it was Seattle 105, Washington 87. In hockey, the Islanders over Philadelphia 7 to 4. Colorado and the Rangers tied at 4 all. Detroit 4, Toronto 3. Montreal over St. Louis 5 to 3. And Minnesota and Calgary tied at 2 apiece. 